India's largest pharma company Sun Pharma is witnessing a technical breakout post the Q1 earnings. In our ideas for profit today, I'll have a closer look at the results of the company to know what should be investor strategy going forward from here. Well, in Q1 FY21, the sales were down by 10%, mainly on the account of decline in the US business and which was partially offset by the steady growth in India business and the surge in the API sales. Now, sales in the base quarter last year included a one-time contribution from the speciality business in US and hence the numbers are strictly not comparable with the last year's quarter. Other than the high base effect of the speciality business last year, US sales were also impacted by the weaker sales for speciality drugs that are used for dry skin, dry eyes disease and also the skin disease. Now EBITDA margin improved mainly because of the better product mix and lower other expenses. Now consolidated reported numbers also had an exceptional item. Now company subsidiary Taro Pharma reported one time settlement charge of uh, 418 million US dollars. An additional provision of about 60 million dollars has also been taken on the related un ongoing multi-jurisdiction civil antitrust matters. Now post factoring in the exceptional and the forex gain, the profit before tax declined by 13%, which was better than the street estimates. Now global speciality business sales sequentially dropped from $126 million to $78 million in Q1 and that was due to the reduced offtake for clinically administered products such as Illumia, Sequa and Livulan. Now, both the sales and clinical trials for the advanced versions were also uh, not going that well. Now, note that the pre-COVID in January and uh, February times, there was still good traction in these blockbuster drag drugs. Now, similarly, the offtake for the recent launch, say Absorica LD, has also been impacted. Now, the company's specialty business, which is largely US focused, has been an important part of the company's strategy to scale up the business and launch itself into the domain of complex molecules and the novel dosage forms. Now, while it was uh, it has acquired and also launched various pro portfolios. In the last few years, the company has also faced significant pricing pressure here. Now, the challenge had been compounded by the cost pressure due to the higher R&D spending as well as the marketing expenses. Now, among the positives of the quarter are regulatory approval for Illumia in Japan, which is used for the treatment of dry eyes. And among the regulatory hurdles, ongoing compliance issues with the Halol plant remains a case to be watched. Now, important complex generic filings filed uh, from Halol plant also remains on hold. Now, management mentions that the remediation actions are almost complete. And however, the timeline is still now uh, difficult to predict as to how soon will this be operational. Other than this key risk, to watch uh, is the fallout of the recent US president's executive orders on the pharma sector as well. Now, near term business visibility remains quite uncertain but is definitely improving with the reopening of the economy. India business is expected to remain steadier as it has relatively high 50% of the contribution from the chronic therapies. Added to that, the expansion of the field force in India is near completion and that should really help increase the share of India business in the medium term. Now among the positives also uh, which support the company for the high investment foray is the strong balance sheet and as well as the near zero net debt. Now further the company also has strong product offering in the US market which consists of an approved ANDAs for 491 products. Now company has 101 drug applications even now pending for approval. Now management is hopeful of a EBITDA break even for flu products especially in the specialty chemicals business. Now um, next uh, that's next fiscal and uh, thus the operating leverage should also kick in from FY22 onwards. Though the valuation is relatively expensive at 15.4 times FY22 um, expected EV to EBIT the improved sentiments may also uh, push the stock further. The stock, however, is expected to be a beneficiary of the sector-wide trend also going forward from here and therefore investors can actually look to add uh, on dips this stock in their portfolio for the long term.